of the area median or below, and that the assistance can be for up to 15 months. Um, we're trying to provide grantees with flexibility to operate, establish their programs, and operate them within those parameters, but with a great deal of flexibility to um, address local needs as they see it. Um, the role of the Treasury here is to provide policy guidance so that grantees can establish and follow their own program policies to meet local needs. And we're developing outreach and technical assistance so that our grantees can understand best practice. Of course, we have um, a role in monitoring to make sure that the payments are reaching intended populations. Secretary Yellen, I hate to interrupt you. My time is gonna be up shortly, but I am very concerned about the flexibility uh, that the states have. Uh, and I don't really know what all of that means, uh, but I do know that there's a lot of confusion because some states had moratorium programs, some cities had moratorium programs, the federal government has a moratorium program. And so I think that's confusing uh, to our renters. In addition to that, for the state of California to say that they're going to pay 80% uh, of uh, the rental uh, assistance rather than 100%, uh, bothers me somewhat, and I don't know what other states are doing. And I know uh, that the federal government uh, does guidance, so I'd like to know if you can think about any role that we can play to help straighten out confusion and to help stabilize this rental assistance. Congresswoman, we um, did distribute uh, um, frequently asked questions revised from the previous administrations to try to provide additional guidance. But um, if you have concerns, my staff will be glad to work with you in your office to see if it's possible to address them. Thank you very much. I appreciate that because there is confusion out there and I'm worried uh, about um, you know what is happening with this confusion and whether or not our landlords are gonna abandon us uh, and not go for another moratorium. And so it's a lot of questions. I will be back for you and thank you so very much. Uh, with that, uh, I now recognize Mr. McHenry for five minutes. Uh, that, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, and look, uh, Chair, Chair Powell and uh, Chairman Powell and uh, Secretary Yellen, uh, you know, I, I've um, I previously asked about the, the question of the independence of the Fed and trying to get the Secretary of the Treasury uh, to opine about that. Uh, 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 Dr. Yellen, um, I would suggest that maybe I, sh I need to skip that question with you. I think you have very practical understanding and knowledge here at play. And um, you'll treat your successor as, as you wish to, to have been treated uh, when, when you're sitting in, uh, when he, since he is now sitting in your chair. Uh, you can so, um, that. Yes, well, uh, look, um, it's it's nice to have uh, uh, two folks that that understand uh, this um, in these respective seats. But uh, uh, Chair Chairman Powell, I, I want to begin with you and talk about inflation. Um, there's uh, continues to be a great deal of speculation uh, that we should be worried about inflationary pressures, particularly after the passage of the most recent 1.9 trillion dollar spending bill, the so-called stimulus or COVID stimulus bill. Um, and then uh, we see recent press reports of an additional $3 trillion of spending contemplated by this administration. Um, does does the, the Fed share that there are inflationary pressures and concerns with this rate of spending? Uh, what's the view now? Thanks. So let me start by saying that we're strongly committed to our, uh, our price stability mandate, which is you know, along with our maximum employment uh, mandate, those are the two mandates that you've essentially given us. So, uh, and that we, we construe that as, as two inflation that is 2% uh, over time, in fact, inflation that averages 2% over time. Um, in, we do expect that inflation will move up uh, over the course of this year, first because of um, what we call base effects, the, the very low readings of March and April of last year drop out of the 12-month calculation and mechanically it rises, but that goes away quite quickly. 
uh, possibly after that, we'll see a situation in which, uh, as the economy reopens and vaccine vaccination continues, there could be a surge in spending and there could be some bottlenecks in the economy. We see, we see some of that now. We might see some upward pressure on prices. Prices. Our best view is that these uh, the effect on inflation will be neither particularly large nor persistent. And part of that just is that we've been living in a world of strong disinflationary pressures around the world, really, for a quarter of a century. And we, we don't think that uh, a one-time uh, uh, surge in spending leading to temporary price increases would disrupt that. However, we have the tools to deal with that. We remain strongly committed to inflation expectations anchored at 2%, and we'll, we'll use our tools as appropriate to achieve that. As far as uh, further fiscal policy is concerned, it's not up to us to, uh, comp uh, as we've discussed on some occasions, uh, we don't comment on fiscal policy. We try not to, particularly on, on specific bills and things like that. So I'll leave that to, to others. Well, Secretary Yellen, uh, about fiscal policy. Uh, we have, uh, as uh, uh, Chairman Waters highlighted, the uh, rental assistance, the $25 billion of rental assistance to individuals and families uh, that were in arrears because of the lockdowns. Um, and uh, and we've tried to support them with some rental assistance. What guardrails has the Department of Treasury put in place to ensure that the funds are actually prioritized for individuals and families who are in rental arrears? Well, it is it is Treasury's job to establish uh, guardrails, and we've we've done that by um, issuing a set of frequently answered questions that. Um, are essentially guidance about how the money needs to be used. Um, it clarifies that grantees have flexibility, but um, also that there are uh, requirements of the statute and um, that we will, you know, follow up to make sure that the uh, payments um, are going to eligible households and that the guidelines of the program are being followed. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Secretary Yellen. Final question I have is about oversight, uh, Secretary Yellen. Uh, your predecessor agreed to very onerous and, and rigid and strong oversight uh, for the CARES Act. And this current $1.9 trillion has rescinded all those things, sadly. Uh, except this uh, quarterly hearing. Uh, and so what I'd like to hear is your voluntary uh, commitment to uh, work with Congress, the GAO, the Special Inspector Generals, and the Congressional Oversight Commission, as well as this committee. Well, you have it. I think oversight is very important, and I pledge to um, work with this committee and the oversight groups. Uh, thank, thank you, you Secretary Yellen, and congratulations on uh, your, your new chair.